our librarians wouldn't take care of it. But for the time being, I think this is a this is more of a sledgehammer than a finish hammer. And I, I, I'm a vote against this. Thank you. The gentlemen, for the debate on the motion. Gentleman four. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, to uh, debate in favor of the bill. The gentleman has the floor to debate in favor of the bill. Um, as the good gentleman from uh, 12 is, uh, has mentioned, we have been debating this, this bill or some version of it for over a year. And uh, we've heard a great deal of testimony in committee on problems in libraries. Uh, I, I, I'm amazed to hear that people will still say that uh, there are no problems in any of the libraries. We have had many, many people come down and testify in front of state affairs and bringing books that are in libraries for which they have gone to libraries and protested the presence of these books and the distribution of these books to children. So to say that there are no problems, if you're in a district where there are no problems, you're fortunate. I will point out, if you're in a district where there are no problems, then this bill should not be an issue for you. I urge a green light. For debate on the motion. Jump three. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, to debate in favor of the bill. Don't ask for it, uh, I just want to applaud the efforts from the gentleman from 12. Um, you know, I, I've seen this process and how hard he's been working on this and how he's brought different stakeholders together. Uh, our offices are, are near each other, and it's it's constantly has somebody coming in and out of there. And, um, you know, it is it is making sausage, but I think this is a very good bill that this body can get behind, and I just wanted to uh, appreciate the good work. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, for the debate on the motion, good lady from the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, to debate the bill. It has the floor to debate the bill. Um, we pass many bills in this chamber that affect one area and not another. So to uh, use that as a reason not to support this bill just seems counterproductive to what we do. We take care of the whole state, and sometimes we take care of areas that are affected in one part of the state but not the other. This this bill is addressing an issue that is prevalent in our area, so I would appreciate your green light. Thank you, ladies, for the debate on the motion. You lay from six. We're Thank you. With the good gentleman from District 12, 12. 12 please, uh, would he yield to a question? Gentleman 12. Gentleman yields. Gentleman yields. Thank you, good gentleman. Um, in here, when you talk about the 30 days and if the then after the 30 days, if they do not remove the book, who, who is going to determine within that 30 days the, if the Miller test, if this book has, you know, met that Miller test or not? Jump 12. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and good lady from six. Um, so yeah, as you read through that section on page three, um, you're going to find that they do have 30 days to go ahead and relocate the book. Um, that's going to go before uh, the Board of Trustees or the Library Board. And one of the things I think that's important to emphasize is this legislation uses respondent superior language. And in attorneys um, and the legal world, that would mean that oh. the library board or the board of trustees is actually who's held responsible. It's not the librarian herself or himself, whoever's Daniel distributing Crane, the material Crane, at the front Crane, desk. It's going to be the library Crane, board of trustees um, who's held responsible for that. They're going to review that request for relocation and make a decision whether or not they want to move the material. Um, and then beyond that, if, if they say, no, we're not going to move the material, we, we think you're actually wrong. That's going to then go to um, a judge or jury. Uh, civil causes of action, you can have either a judge or judge and jury. Thank you, gentlemen. Good lady from six. A follow-up, please. Does the gentleman yield to an additional question? Sure. Thank gentleman you. Gentleman yields. Good lady from six. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and good gentleman. So my follow-up question deals with um, then after the 30 days, and you say then they can go to a cause of action. At what point does the prosecuting attorney or the um, attorney general um, have the opportunity to step in and, and ask for injunctive relief? Down 12. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and good lady from six. Um, we are going to have to see how that plays out and, and how that process goes. My, my hope in the relocation form, and again, to go back over the purpose of this bill, is they can have the material. And that was what was discussed over the last several pieces of legislation. Are we banning books? Are we removing books? No, we're not. You we're codifying a relocation right. policy. So break. just like we would have a romance section, we would have a fiction or a nonfiction section. 
they're just going to need to relocate the material to another section. So I hope that satisfies your question. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. You're late six. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To debate the bill, please. The lady has floor debate the bill. Okay, so I'd like to start by commending the good gentleman. Um, I have asked a lot of questions about this um, to all the folks who have been engaged um, in this process. Um, we've had several different, as he said, iterations. Um, we had one in the Senate that we thought we could all get behind, and it failed, um, I think, by one vote. And so uh, here we are again. Um, I voted against House Bill 314, and House Bill 710 is almost a carbon copy. There are a few things. Uh, the Miller test is the law, so whether it was in here or not, the Miller test has to apply based on our Supreme Court. So that is something that... Um, is already in law. I, I just still have some real concerns about us saying to parents, we are going to decide what your children can and can't read from the state level. And I, I have seen some of the materials. We have taken some of the materials out of context when we've read them. Um, and, and folks have said that would be um, a book that we would, would not allow. And I, again, I would have questioned that. And so I appreciate that we now have codified, again, the, the Miller test. Um, but what are we going to do with our small rural libraries that have one small room, 800 to, to 1,000 square feet, that has no ability to add a place for um, a new section, an adult section that has to be basically down in lock and key and that um, they'd have to have somebody monitoring that. So I'm very concerned about that. Um, I, I'm also concerned with the fact that we have a local library system. We have county commissioners. We have the ability. We've elected these people or they've been appointed. And so we are preempting, we are saying to them, we don't trust what you're doing. And some of these uh, libraries, I know we've had, this has been a huge issue and we all wanted, would like to see this um, dealt with. And I thought that I was, had a bill that I could get behind and say, okay, the librarians have gone neutral, but my librarians, I have gotten um, emails from them, all from mine in my district and all over the state asking us to please not tie their hands, let them do their jobs, let them look at these uh, materials individually when parents come in. And my librarians have said, Lori, we've had very few challenges in 25 years. There's been very, very few challenges. That's because and this came from so, the American um, Legislative Exchange Council. But we, we will take care of that. And we will Coke either remove Industries. the book or put it in another section. That's Charles I know what, that, that that is what the good gentleman says we are trying to do here. But again, we have local boards. We have local folks that are in charge of this, school boards. Um, and then another thing is if, if this <laughs> only dealt with um, schools, Florida I, I think I could and Texas probably get both behind it. But about public libraries have a different standard books? by which they have to deal with the entire community. Fine. And so um, for that and, and many other reasons, I, I am just can't get past, as a good gentleman in this body has said many times, it's a bridge too far for me to cross. So I'm a no. Thank you, ladies, for the debate on the motion. Jump to. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I'll be so bold to would answer the, good, the question. The good what do we do with a... Would, would the good I've been a debate debate against... Or for the bill, I'm sorry. Debating your debate. For the the gentleman bill. has the floor to debate the bill. Uh, the library in my town is about 800 to 1,000 square feet, and the answer is we move the material. Currently, you can't go in the library and get on the Internet and access pornography or anything like that in a library. Currently... If a minor goes into a library, they cannot check out a movie that is R-rated if they are under the age of 18 years old. That's going on right now. Yes. But currently, as told to me by the librarian in my community, if someone goes to check out a book that she knows is terrible, according to library pro uh, policy, not only can she not stop that, she's not even allowed to inform the parent. 
oh, of that process. Yeah. And, and I'd like to deal with one other thing really oh, short, if on. I may read that's from an article. Can I, I don't think that's true. Ask to read from an article. Is there an objection? Very shortly. Aaron, uh, uh, the good gentleman, can read from it very shortly. Thank you. This is this concept that there's no problem here. Uh, This is in the Review Journal. Kootenai County Sheriff Bob Norris said he was shocked and disturbed at some of the books available to youth at the local libraries. He's been hanging on to the copies. He'd rather pay for them than give them back. (laughs) <laughs> this is testimony by the sheriff of Kootenai uh-huh. County, the second largest county, I think, in our state. So this concept that it's not going on anywhere is simply not true. A false argument. Oh, if yeah, we care about our kids, hell, a simple moving of material is the fix. This is an easy green light. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, gentlemen. For debate on the motion. Good late from nine. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, to debate the bill. Lady has the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have probably one of the smallest libraries in the state in my own hometown, 800 square feet. The librarian is one of my former 4-H kids. She was horrified to think that someone was spending taxpayer money for pornography to put in a library. We are not telling parents, you, we don't want your kids to read whatever you want them to read. If you want to go to an adult bookstore and buy your children this kind of garbage, we're not preventing that. What? But we should not be paying taxpay, using taxpayer dollars for this and then taking the chance of other children trash? seeing this kind of garbage. So I would urge your green vote. Thank you. A racist, I guess. Take it place for debate on the motion. Gentleman 25. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, to debate in favor of the motion. The gentleman has the floor to debate the motion. Um, I supported this bill last year and made several recommendations about changes. Most of them were incorporated. Uh, I didn't need the changes last year, but I thought it would make the bill a little bit better this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, earlier today, I had an interesting conversation with uh, uh, one of our members saying that the Miller test has a problem because I thought it was removed. But I've had since a conversation with a senator who was involved in the sponsorship of the bill that some people like, and he, and he pointed out to me, no, the Miller test is still here. There was a paragraph removed on page two, par- paragraph B, which I read, and I felt that that was part of the Miller test. And, uh, and I was concerned about the com- uh, comments that you have to study this material on the whole as a whole and not just as like a paragraph out of a book or a chapter Um, he pointed out uh, that the miller test basically is on it starts on page one um, with item six on page line 33 and goes all the way up through and including the part on page two that says and i'm not going to read the whole functions of loot exhibition of the genitals and general area nothing herein contained is intended to include or prescribe any manner which when considered as a whole so that was a part that i thought had been taken out but it's still in there and he said that it was duplicative to include it in paragraph b um i do like the idea that one of the changes here is that if someone is unhappy with the materials they need to report it to the library and fill out a form it ex- explains uh, that they're unhappy with the piece of material and why. It goes to the board. They have 30 days to make a decision. Um, and uh, then the board can say, yeah, we're going to remove this item or we're going to leave it there. Uh, what we're going to do with it is the board's decision. Uh, I, I want to make a comment that I believe is true, is that it won't go to court unless the individual who fill out the form decides that they're wrong and then they would have to take it to court it doesn't automatically move up to the court system it would take uh, legal action of that individual to move it on up the, the ladder and then the miller test would come into play so the library board has a responsibility to make sure that the material uh, meets the miller test to be considered inappropriate material um, with that mr speaker um, I just ask everyone to reconsider and give it a green light, and uh, that's it. 
Hey, gentlemen, any further motions? Further debate on the motion? Hearing none, gentlemen from 12, gentlemen 13. A debate against the bill, sir? Gentlemen has the floor to debate the bill. So, yeah, we get a chance to see it again. And uh, we keep talking about it. Is it prevalent? Is it not? Um, I think we won't have to quit pretending that it that it is just pervasive across Idaho. I, I'm sure everybody in here like me has gotten tons and tons of emails on this from library users, librarians. Um, holy smokes, Ketchum is emailing me all the time, Bonneville. Um, so let's start, and we've heard about the small libraries, which is going to be, you know, especially tough for them because now you have an unfunded mandate to move to a different area. It's like, well, it was over here and now it's there. Uh, you know, what are they going to do? And, you know, good lady says you have one of the smallest in the state. Well, ours is one of the biggest over in Nampa, District 13. You know, we're the third largest city, depending on the day, whether you like it or not. We are. So I got the receipts basically from them and said fiscal year 2023, Nampa Public Library had 217,000 unique visits from patrons. Bookmobile had another 10,000. That's a lot. 2023, they had 642,000 and change of checkouts of physical books. 132,000 and change checkouts of electronic ebooks. In fiscal year 2003, they had two challenges. One was moved because it was a book from 2009 and the, dated, the outdated information. <laughs> so they just moved it. And the second one was a teen graphic novel, basically a comic book, to adult graphic novel section, which they moved it. But the thing was, it was not even a Napa Public Library cardholder that noticed it and requested it, but they still moved it, which means 50% of them didn't, weren't even cardholders. So we, we've seen, <laughs> you get this, and it seems like it's an epidemic here in Idaho. And these librarians are trained. And when you, <laughs> I don't know, when you talk to your librarians, they work hard. They know what they're doing. You, you know, they've got selection processes. They've got review processes. They do have, you know, the Miller test. And you also have your parents running around as far as that goes. Um, you know, this, from the get-go, because it's been floating around here for a number of years now, seems like, you know, it, it's a bill, a legislation in search of a problem. And you get the straw argument. I watched the State Affairs Committee meeting, and you had users and librarians and people associated with it time after time that when asked, would you, would, if I handed you this and it met 18, 15, 14, would you hand that to your kid or would you give this to a child? And they're saying, look, that, that, if that condition existed, wouldn't, but it doesn't. And so we're chasing this around. And I want you to think about this in another aspect. Think about your Second Amendment rights. You're like, what? Wait, where's Kenny going? Here's where I'm going. Every time across the country, you have one shooting. And I think the stats are, out of every 30 incidents, that there's a good guy with, and a bad guy with guns. Only one time out of 30 does the good guy have to pull a trigger because they're deterred. But you hear about that one. You always hear about the one. Nobody knew where Sandy Hook was unless you there. You hear about that one. That's what's happening here. I found a book. I found 32 in the state of Idaho. One of the biggest libraries in the state and they've got review, they've got, you know, elected and local boards, local, local control. They have a lot of technology in there to, to track who's, who's checking out what, who's got access to what. But 
This is reacting like we see with our guns. And we know it's not the guns that are the problem. And these aren't, and these books are not being handed to kids. At least in our libraries, which is comforting. Now understand schools and public libraries are already exempt. That's what we're talking about here. It's in, they've been exempted because they're dealing with the public. A lot of different viewpoints. Sheriff from Kootenai County, he said, my gosh, look at this. Others may be like, what are you looking at? That's why it's the public. That's why they have some of these common tests. They have review boards, even the smaller places. And I would, su I would suggest that the smaller ones, <laughs> those librarians are right there in your communities and they would know pretty quickly if the community didn't agree with what they were doing in a library. So we still have some of the same fights. We still have the civil cause. We still have the $250 enticement, as some might say, as well as legal fees, insurance, that it could cost. We don't know. But whoever fills out now a standardized form comes in, and they believe that for everybody's kids, they shouldn't be reading this particular book. It shouldn't be in that section. They get to file this. And they're not waiting for a review. They're just waiting for 30 days. File it to move it. If, the, if they review and say, well, no, that's in the proper place. We vetted this. And they still disagree. They get to sue. So you've got maybe the possibility of overzealous parents, people that are looking at taking advantage of that. I mean, eventually, even the big libraries run into the ground. And we talked about this last session. You know, we talked about eye cramp and that kind of thing. It's like, pretty soon you've got the insurance companies deciding your book policy. None of us want that. The parents, and we just talked about this a bit ago. I'm old enough to remember an hour ago. The parents are the responsible, most responsible party for the well-being of their child. It, it's going to cause chaos. You've got librarians, libraries that already have these boards set up. They don't know how many of these forms you're going to get because now you've got the opportunity of being, being successful on your lawsuit but there's no downside. There's nothing happens to the person filing it if, they, if it fails. And all they have to say is, I don't agree with it. And here we go. And, you know, so it will cause a chaos, especially the smaller, the smaller places. Um, they don't have room. They, where do they put it? The schools, they don't have an adult section. They only go up to, you know, a certain age. There is no adult section for the schools. But you keep, we keep talking about the parental rights and responsibilities. And that's important. We've got local rules, local elections, and we don't need this overreach. We don't need a nanny state to solve what, at least in one of the biggest in the state, and by and large, by the librarians that you've all been talking to is not an issue. We can't keep listening to the straw argument. And I would encourage you not to listen to the echo chambers. You remember last year, Meridian nearly lost. And Meridian's bigger than us, even though I hate to admit it. But Meridian, you had 50 people that essentially sent 1,100 emails and nearly close the library you don't want that happening across the state we have individual rights and we talked about it earlier as well people fought for those rights we had the greatest generation we had a generation of young men that stormed the beaches of normandy 
Now, we have these culture warriors and social warriors that want to attack the libraries. Chaos. And let me tell you about chaos. And it's, I wish it were mine, but to quote Camels on the Horizon, which many of you have read, seen, bad times create strong men. Strong men create good times. Good times create weak men, and weak men create chaos. And that's what we've got here. That's what you'll cause with your public libraries that have a responsibility to the whole community and your schools. I, that's what I know. I think... Mr. I think, Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I object. I think uh, at this point in time, we're just filibustering. We're just talking about complete nonsense, going to Normandy and everything else. Uh, at some point in time, we got to get back to the bill. The good gentleman is just getting back to the bill right now. Yeah, sure. just getting back to it. Because they had those, you had people that fought for individual liberties. And I've heard on this floor and I've heard in the halls, well, it's not as bad as it was. <laughs> they didn't say it's a good bill. They just said it's not as bad as it was. It's like getting hung by a new rope. Like, well, it wasn't bad as it was. It's still bad. It's, we're talking about the exemption. Don't forget, that's what we're talking about. We've got good people in our libraries. We've got the guardrails in place. We don't need to do this. I urge your red light. Thank you. Hey, Jones, for the bail on the bill. Good job, 31. Thank you, uh, good speaker. Would the good gentleman from 12 yield to a question? Gentleman from 12 yields to a question. Gentleman yields. Gentleman yields. Thank you, good gentleman. I uh, appreciate the work that you've done on this bill. And the good gentleman from 25 went through an iteration there of the form and, and how that worked. And I read in lines 21 and 22, uh, section 5, I'm not sure what page it's on. Third, third page, right there. Um, would, you, would you help the good body understand that 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 doesn't say or does say whether the prosecuting attorney or attorney general can instigate the process rather than having the form instigate the process. Mr. Speaker. Gentleman from 12. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and good gentleman from 31. 31. Um, what that formally means is that the attorney general or the county prosecuting attorney can file it on their behalf if they can't go and get it filed. So they can help them in the process should they choose to, to seek that help. They could get help from them. Jump 31. <coughs> Just a quick follow up. Gentlemen, gentlemen, yield to different, another question. Gentlemen, yield. Just want to make sure I understood that, and maybe you could help me if I'm wrong. So you're saying that if the person submits the form, but maybe doesn't know how to do the form or did it wrong or whatever the case may be, the, the prosecuting attorney or the gen, attorney general could step in the process and, and do it for that individual? John 12. Mr. Speaker and good gentleman from 31. So you'll find language in there that says a uh, minor, a parent, or legal guardian thereof. Oh. Okay, and that's where they can step in and assist. Thank you. Thank you, John 31. It's for the bail on the bill. Jump 26. Mr. Speaker, for a uh, debate. Gentleman has the floor to debate. I believe the gentleman from 12 is more than capable of covering this in his uh, closing speech if he needs to. Uh, when I went home over the summer, uh, a friend of mine who's an insurance agent said, do you guys realize if you'd passed the library bill last year, uh, the libraries that I do the insurance for were not going to have insurance. He said every single uh, one I issued was uh, a rider from the companies that if this kind of legislation passes, they're going to pull the policies. So I'm a no on this anyway. I think the locals are doing just fine. But uh, the other thing that hasn't been talked about in here is when you write in these uh, these penalty clauses and all this stuff, we're going to have some local libraries that are flying without uh, insurance. For debate on the motion, Jump 13. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, to debate in favor of the bill. Jump has the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the body. I believe this is now the third year 
that we have dealt with this issue. We started out with a piece of legislation that simply wanted to remove an exemption that is in state statute with regards to the obscenity laws. If any member of this body were to hand a minor child a piece of material that violates section 18, 15, 14, you're going to go to jail for a year, except a librarian. That was the first legislation that passed this body. Then we had the legislation last year, and now we have this legislation before us. I can tell you, if this doesn't pass, we're going back to that bill. This issue is going to get solved one way or the other. You better pick which one you like. To sit there and say that this does not exist in Idaho libraries is patently false. If it doesn't, you have nothing to be afraid of. But to the good gentleman from District 13, we don't represent Sun Valley. We don't represent Ketchum. We represent Nampa, specifically District 13 in Nampa. And I have a constituent who videoed. Mr. Speaker, come on. Good gentleman from 13. And I had my receipts. You what? From Nampa. I've got the numbers from Nampa. You know, and yeah, mine was illustration that we we make this good decision are you for the whole state. Well, I don't know. He, yeah, he, it's okay, good gentleman. We, we talked about Normandy, too. I get it. So be careful, good gentleman. Thank 13. you, Mr. Speaker. Just to help the good gentleman from 13, I don't represent Sun Valley. I am elected by the citizens of Nampa, 45,000 of them, to represent their position on a piece of legislation, irrespective of what Sun Valley thinks. They have a fine representative or two that's representing them and their position on the issue. And that's the way our founders intended this to be. But the good gentleman from District 13 and I have an individual in our district that after last year the bill died, videoed her 15-year-old daughter checking out material that would violate Section 1815.14. It is happening in the state of Idaho's third largest city in Idaho. So to sit here and say it's not happening, to sit it through three years of hearings and see what's happening and have parents come and demand action, we're going to do something. I think this is a good bill. Is it perfect? No. No bill passing that passes here is perfect. We took the fine from $2,500 last year down to $250, trying to say to people, we're not trying to fine you. Just relocate the stinking book. That's all you got to do. If there's a question about the book, why are we fighting so hard to put obscene material in front of our children? Why? Mr. Speaker. Good lady from the six. I object to, to the tone, and we're always getting called on impugning, and I feel that there's a lot of impugning going on in this in well, this. Um, good debate. lady, I, and I kind of let it get away because there was impugning on the other side earlier. So I would encourage everybody to kind of tone it down. But also, uh, let's continue with the debate, knowing what the concerns are. Good gentleman, 13. Mr. Speaker, would you put us at ease? House of ease.
Hardware and closed captioning for Idaho in Session is provided by the Idaho Legislature and Idaho Legislative Services Office. Additional funding is provided by the Idaho Public Television Endowment. like they went into their caucus, didn't they? Have a powwow to make sure everybody votes right. Justin Manwaring is the caucus chairman. You're welcome, you're welcome. Go at ease. This is a library bill that uh, will find a library 250 bucks and somebody sees something that they define as being obscene. Somebody could bring a Playboy magazine. House be in order. <laughs> We're going at ease. We were debating House Bill 710. Good gentleman from 13. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members of the body. Anyways, back to House Bill um, 710. If a book violates the obscenity statute 1815-14, you fill out a form, Give the option for 30 days the library has to weigh out their decision 
and can move the book to a out, outside of the children's section. That's all this says. If they choose not to do that and they want to continue to push the envelope or they don't think that it violates 18, 15, 14, they have the option, the parent then has the option at that, at that point to, in sync, uh, to, in, uh, to receive injunctive relief in the amount of 250 bucks. Oh. That's it. <laughs> you don't see anything wrong with that train? We didn't have the 30-day opportunity in the last bill. That's a good provision that we've put in there. You've been there if 16 something is years. questionable inside your community, Eight your local years community, too long. move the book. That's all you have to do. And this thing's not going to go to court. But if you choose not to move the book and you want to you want to stand on your First Amendment rights and thinks it doesn't violate it, then you have the opportunity for a judge to make that determination. Oh, yeah. This Get is good court, public policy. Right? You made I the can law tell you, Mr. Speaker, and put it in the, in the courts and violate the First Amendment of the today Constitution. That are violating 18, 15, 14. And to sit there and say that it's not you happening be there is not right, because I do know the it has happened in Nevada, Idaho. In 2002. So I would ask for your green light. Thank you. For the debate on the motion. Jump 25. Mr. Speaker, do you debate the bill? Bill has the floor to debate the bill. Uh, I wasn't going to get up and stand, but I think it's time we all stand forward for what we've, our district. Because the gentleman 13 talked about Santa Cruz District. I have heard nothing from anybody wanting me to vote for this bill from District 25. I'm sure there are people in District 25 who want me to, but well, there's lots of them from 25 don't want me to. So the good gentleman for, from 12, should this not pass here or in the Senate, if he wants to know how he can get my vote, leave the judge part in, take out the civil action, you've got my vote. And gentlemen, for debate on the motion. Gentlemen, five. Mr. Speaker, to debate in favor of the bill. Gentleman has the floor to debate the motion. Uh, there have been two arguments that have been repeated, not just in this session, but for years, and I'd like to try and refute them. Number one, it's not happening in my district. When our family moved from Los Angeles to Kootenai or to Cache oh, okay. County You're, in you lived in LA, so state did of I, uh, Utah. Seven years. There had never been a robbed, arm, uh, an armed robbery committed in that county. For the county representative to go down to the state legislature and argue, as some of us have, that it has never happened in my county, so therefore I'm not going to vote to make armed robbery illegal, is kind of a ludicrous argument, in my opinion. Secondly, it has been repeated that oh, we are removing today, the sir? rights of parents to have they make the decision as to what their children can read that is patently don't false go to as the well library. any parent Amazon, can go into the adult section the if the spill were to pass uh, remove any account. books they want take them home and give them to their kids to read so there is no lack of freedom as far as what the children can read if the parents have the full knowledge and the consent to go into the library and get that material so for those reasons i would urge library, you to lady, vote yes sir, on this bill agree. thank you Thank you, gentlemen, for the debate on motion. for the library. I'd never be an engineer. Mr. Speaker, debate for the second time. Is there anybody who wishes to debate the motion for the first time? Can you know the gentleman debate the bill, the motion for the second time? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to commend the good gentleman from uh, District 13. I, I appreciated him admitting that he's here to represent his district, because so am I. And I think that's what this bill overlooks. This is a local government issue. It is overreach by the state government. There was a time not too long ago when the Republican Party put a big emphasis on local governance. I don't know, it's still in the platform, but they don't seem to care about it much anymore. My district, if this was in there, the local people would stand up and elect a new library board or new county commissioners or whatever they needed to do. That is what needs to happen. This is a local government issue. Thank you. Good gentlemen, it's further debate on the motion for the second time. Gentleman three. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, to debate for the second time. Gentleman has the floor to debate the motion. Uh, just a quick answer to uh, the good gentleman from 26. Um, I understand that there may be certain insurance carriers that do not want to write this form of business, but there is multiple uh, carriers throughout the state that would write libraries. So if, if one carrier won't, that's what the free market can, can help with. So thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
Thank you, gentlemen. It's further debate on this motion well, for the second time. Hearing comment, or was that John Burt's side? Hearing none. Gentlemen, 12 care to close the debate. Yes, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I'm just going to address a couple of points. Um, won't take up too much time. Um, to the gentleman from 28 who brought forward, um, he wanted to see the words as a whole. Um, again, that is on page two, line nine, and where I read considered as a whole. Uh -huh. So that is in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. As far as government overreach goes, and this is a local control issue, I remember last year I had a constituent from my district call me. And she said, hey, Representative Crane, um, can you pass Crane, a bill oh, this is to help Crane. my daughter get to try Red out Crane, for the volleyball Crane team and, here in town? And Jason and, uh, Crane. I said, well, Jerry can Crane. you give me some more information? She said, we're a homeschool family, and my daughter what, doesn't get to years? have the chance to try out for the local um, volleyball Out team. She said, I know she's not any good, but I wanted to have the chance to try. Cranes represent and I said, you know what? I said, before I take this to the whole state of Idaho, and 12, I would like to try at the school board level first. So yeah. we did. We went together and we talked and to the so school these board. Guys represent and you 100, know what? The girl had a chance to try people. out and they fixed it. Two guys. There are times where local control happens One. and we don't have to make it a statewide Deadline problem. To, uh, Register but when you have multiple counties, Friday multiple for, uh, cities coming forward yeah. with the same problem, that's oh, yeah. where the state then has to step in. We're here oh, today yeah. because mm -hmm. locally it's not getting taken care of. Oh, that's why we're yeah. here. That's why this bill is being written. That's why it's being asked for. This is not a policy bill <laughs> coming from the agency. How much money you guys get from uh, Charles Coe? This is a people bill. People coming forward with real problems that's at where their it's local level, from the they American can't get an answer. They can't get anything Council. to happen. Um, the from the lady from six, in um, I, I wanted to comment that the material is not being removed um, and that it's going to stay in the library. And that's that's what's Everybody unique. This is a relocation a -L -E bill. American All the material is going to stay in the library. What we're asking for is just move it. Council. Just move it. They write bills like that's this. not an unreasonable ask of any library. That's not a taxing thing. That's not a burdening thing. They if you want to have the material, that's their okay. Influence. Just please move it out of this way. Put it, to, put it to an area where a parent can go and get it, take it home dollars. with their kid. That's no problem. But don't have it easily in accessible politics. for these little kids. First, so the material needs to stay. So that's the, um, to him. Some, some narratives have been brought up about, well, I have a small library and there's no way people are we're creative things in. Of course, this You can hop on Russian. Facebook Marketplace right and buy a $25 used bookshelf. And that's not going to hurt any library. You can use the checkout desk itself. Go right behind it. Put the books right there. That, we uh, can be creative. You can come up with solutions. Was, uh, putting books we can find problems, but what we're here to do is to find Dewey's solutions. Six hundred. Um, from the de uh, gentleman on, from District section. Thirteen. I didn't care um, about anything that. There were, of course, I like no, geographic when, when we talk about this, this is the parents' job. On, I'm here on, uh, right now. My kids at school. You know, women who were bare chested. I can't be there. But it's not a possibility for anybody in this building right now who has kids in school. You're not there with them right now. Yeah, you need this to school and community keep, libraries. You need to keep your kids out of the public so that's not and a school possibility. libraries. Of course, you probably um, school your kids uh, I think this is a great bill. We've worked really school. hard to try to come up with a solution that's amicable for everybody. everybody to have the material there who? to relocate it, not, I think is a reasonable request. Not anybody agreement. in my family, Thank bub. Thank you, gentlemen. Debate is closed. Question is, House Bill 710 pass the House. Let's see if we've got the courage to do this. It didn't pass last year with one vote, and thank goodness for for Mr. Gardner and and, and Cheatham. Let's see, did they make it this time? Well, by golly, has every member voted? Ah, it looks like they made it. Does any member just to change their vote? <laughs> Clerk will lock the machine and record the pairs. Report the pairs. Scott votes aye. Necochea votes nay. Palmer votes aye. Burns votes nay. Vanderrata votes aye. Roberts votes nay. 47 aye. Okay. 23 nays. Majority have Are we going to see the Nazi House party House now? House 7 tenths pass House. Is there a correction of title? No correction of title. We're going to have to see a third party. Bill be transmitted to the Senate. Gentlemen, 22. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I ask unanimous consent that the roll call used to suspend rules for House Bill 710.